Kia ora, ko Sharon Holt to ingoa. I'm Sharon Holt here again with some more ideas to help you with your progress in te reo Māori. At the moment my head's really swimming with lots of game ideas, so um, th this one is particularly to do with phrases, And um, but I'm mainly at the moment I'm thinking of it to help people at a basic level wanting to um, practice pronunciation of place names. But for this one with you, I'm um, giving you an insight into what this could be. And could you, you could use it in so many different ways for yourself, for your own learning, in the whanau or with children. Uh, perhaps if you're working with children in a classroom. And so the, this, is, this is, could be done in a couple of ways and I'll give you a quick insight. So behind these four here, I've got four different phrases. They're actually phrases which are the titles from four of our Te Reo Sing Along books and they're phrases that I particularly like and encourage you to use a lot and so um, you can make up your own rules but I'm showing you a couple of things that you could do. So what I've done is I've got a dice which has um, got a blue side a red side, a green side, an orange side and a yellow side which adds to five and so then I've also got one side, can you see that, yep, which is a joker or um, whatever you like to call it, um, if you roll that side you can choose a colour. So I'm just putting this up here so you can see it but basically perhaps four different people would be playing or you'd have two people, two cards each and or if you're doing it yourself, just challenging yourself. So for example, with this one, we could roll the dice and I'm getting call five. So I practice my color and say call five. So if, let's say this is my card. I'll take off this one and I'll practice that sound, E. Whoop, I've rolled call five for the next person. So they'll be this one and they're practicing their sound, which is nu, nu. So this phrase ends with nu and this phrase ends with e. Whoops, it's getting yellow. Oh, there's a red. <laughs> so fero. So go back to this one. So fero is another e. So we're practicing our colour names and our um, pronunciation of syllables. Ooh, so we've got kakariki, this person's turn, and they've got re. So re, I wonder what that phrase could be, re, so we're saying re, good for our pronunciation practice. Um, call fi again, so they've all been, well we won't worry about these ones at the moment, but call fi, miss a turn, kakariki, this one. Now this is a lot of clues, fi something, so if you know our books you'll probably know what that one is and you could maybe make a guess. Let's see what we get here. Oh, there's kikorangi. Kikorangi could be if it's this person's turn. So you might be able to tell now what this word probably is. Ha, there, something new. So we're trying to spin a kikorangi, fero, or karaka. Fero. So this one is haere something new and this is fai something e. Let's see if we can spin those colours. Oh, I've spun the joker. So this person's going to turn over this one and their phrase is fai mai. So it could be a challenge to use this phrase during the rest of that day. And if we'd spun karaka, this person's one would turn over to be haere Tonu. So haere tonu, keep going, lovely phrase to use, and fai mai, um, follow or copy this, the person who's speaking. Okay, so then we won't worry about these two doing it the same way, we'll go back up to, um, I'll, I'll take all these off actually, and I'll show you a little example down here of a phrase while we're here, mahi Kahi, so that person would have been working to um, find that one, mahi kahi, and this one, mahi kahi as in teamwork, work together, and this one is me 
Heidi. So I've also made Mare Heidi as in Let's Go. So I've also made these different colours to emphasise that we put a break after each vowel when we're pronouncing them. So the other way that you can do it is, let's say you've got four people playing or two or whatever, and you're rolling the dice and this time we've got Karaka. So Karaka is, let's say this person's playing with Karaka and it, trying to cover up all the letters in Faimai, but he, that one hasn't got Karaka. So the next one has to have a turn. Actually, we'll do, do this bottom line. So they haven't got Karaka. The next one has got the Joker with all the colours. So they're going to have to choose. Hmm. All right. I'll cover up Ma. Ma. Not very well covered up, is it? Ma. And back to this person's turn. That's um, Kakariki. So they're going to cover up Re. So we're having a race to see who can be the first to cover up. This one's covering up. Kakariki again, saying the colour, and this one spun Karaka again, so the are missing a turn. This one spun the Joker, so they're going to choose to cover up the Kikorangi. So they're just going for red now, they're going for Fero, and this person's still going for three. Oh, spun Karaka again. This one's going for Fero, but they got Kikorangi. This one's turn for fight. Get saying the colours, practicing the colours. This one's turn. That wasn't a red. This one's turn. That wasn't a red or blue either. No. Oh, this one's got Kikorangi. So now we're even. So even though um, this one had a bit of a start, this one's caught up because they didn't roll. So whoever would roll Fedor first would be the winner because they'd covered up all the syllables, if you like, in their word. So it's a good way to practice if you're trying to get used to using a phrase or getting the family used to using a phrase. Good way to practice is to make a game out of it. And then this idea can be used for um, practicing pronunciation of place names as well. So I just thought I'd share that with you because I've been working on that kind of thing at the moment. Perhaps you can take that further and make some ideas up to use with your children.